Welcome back. If uh, things didn't make any sense in the last video, although uh, I am sure they did because this um, algorithm is quite simple. In any case, if anything doesn't make any sense in the last video, then I am hoping that the source code I will provide in this video will make things much, much clearer. Now, for you to get the source code, you can visit my personal web page at the bottom, bottom of this video in the comments area and in my tutorials page you should find a, find a link to these videos and a link to the source code that I'm going to provide now. So remember in the last video we explained the encoding, how it works and uh, as, as just a quick reminder oh I'm sorry here I'm going to show uh, uh, the structure of the code first so to do the encoding we have a encode f function called encode it's written in Java it, rec it will receive an integer array and return a string so it receives an int array and returns a string you can have a function that receives for example a, 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 you know a flow a, an array of doubles or characters or maybe a string maybe things are much easier when you receive a string and return a string for RLE it depends on the purpose of your program the purpose of, uh, for, for which you're using RLE but here I just wanted to show you how it actually works and demonstrate some results so in the in that because we receive an integer array and we want to build, build a string if, of counts and values as you can see here we need two loops one loop to go through the array elements and basically we'll go through the array elements one element at a time and then whenever we, we reach an element we'll try to check the next ones the next identical ones so we go through the first element for example zero and then check the next one the next one the next one if they're equivalent then we just count that and put count and value and then we jump to the one which is there and then count the consecutive ones and put the count and value and things like that so for the, and this will be a string so I'm just separating these by spaces to demonstrate the results but the string will just be concatenated basically something like that as you can uh, expect and here I'm just using color coding red for the va for, for the count and zero for the value now my encode function will look like this it re returns a string and I'm sorry receives an int, int array Value, called values and re returns a string. No comments here just to preserve space that uh, should be here and then wh what I do is I just create a string buffer so I can sort of append the, the values and, and, and the counts and then I have an, a, a, a loop that goes through the values array int equals zero int less than value, values of length uh, i equals zero i less than i plus plus and then I'm assuming, of course, the minimum length, by the way, the minimum uh, uh, repetition for a value is just one. So, for example, this uh, zero here, it repeated just one. So, the minimum is actually one, yeah? So, that's the minimum. And then what I do is I just take the values now, next, the ones after that ith element in the array. So, i plus one is less than values of length as long as we don't go out of, out of bounds. And then I check that the current element if it equals the next element then I increase the run length and I increase the i so I can move to the next element I've explained that here so I can stop go here and then check the next one if the next one is equal what I do is I jump to the next one and check the next one and at the same time I increase the value of the run length so that's what I do exactly here and then after I finish that I append the run length the run length to my string buffer and then append the actual value which is the values of i to my uh, string buffer and then this I++ here guarantees that when I finish with this I don't start at the second element but I start there exactly because I am increasing every time I found I find I'm increasing I every time I find an identical value right um, let's have a look at the actual Java code so in my source code here you'll find this class as I said uh, on my personal web page if you visit the link underneath this video here I have some uh, Java uh, doc comments and then the encode function looks like this we have the string buffer exactly the one the same as the one in the in the um, uh, the one in the slide and then that's the for loop to look to look through the array elements and the while loop to check the next elements and so, and so on and so forth now in my main function here I have these values in an int array as you can see here they are exactly the same 
what I do is I say string s equals encode a so that array I send it to my encode function and it will return a string which I actually print out here as you can see yes I print out the, the resulting string here and I expect to have this string let me go to my um, terminal compile and by the way I was experimenting so let me comment out the decoding stuff I'm sorry we'll come to that in a second so let me compile and then run as you can see here I get the exact string as here let's compare them and you can see it's 40211 um, 40211021301 exactly the same now to move on quickly and that's the function again or the method rather in Java which I would call it method rather than function in OOP in general for the decoding the opposite of that we said it's quite simple what we do is we have a function here uh, called decode it receives a string the string resulting here and then it returns an integer array the array that contains these elements as you've seen in my source code we need some loops to one loop for example to work out the array size the actual array size and as you can guess it will be the sum of counts so the original size of the array that contained these elements uh, it will be 4 plus 2 plus 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 5 and then we need another loop to loop through every count and force a repeat of the elements enough talking let's have a look uh, let's have a look at the source code so the function receives a string the encoded string and re returns an integer array um, we assume that we start with a length of zero and then we loop through the array we loop at every other element so we need element number zero element number two element number four uh, we avoid 1 and 3 because those what has the values in the, in the beginning we avoid them because we need to work out the size of the or original array and because it's a string so we need to work at, at it uh, one character at a time by the way I'm assuming we don't have double figures for repetitions here so I'm assuming every element is repeated between 1 and 9 times because I deal with it one character at a time uh, it can get more complex but I'll leave that to you if we have double figures if we have 10 or more repetitions I'm sorry 10 or more uh, yes values consecutive values of any, uh, any of any certain element anyway so we jump we leave every other element just to to, uh, to, to uh, th loop through the counts first and then we work out the array length by summing the counts that's our array length and then we create the array now and then we loop um, source is my original string so we loop through that source again one character at a time um, and what we do is we get the count again and then what we do is we loop count number of times so if count is four then we loop four times and we repeat the element what we do here is that uh, I use this variable k so that uh, notice that k in the beginning is zero and k plus j here will be zero so that's the first element of the array and then I get the numerical value of the character at i plus 1 because I need to avoid retrieving the character at the count I don't want the count now I want the value itself so I always add 1 to i notice that i here uh, is increased by 2 and that will loop through the counts whereas here I need the values rather than the counts there we get the count here we get the value uh, and the k will guarantee that when I loop when the loop iterates for the next time and the one after we don't start at j at j i.e. we don't go back to element 0 in the array but rather we go through or we go through the uh, count element sort of if I for example if I am here I loop through times and put four zeros and then the next time I come back I don't want to start at zeros and put two ones but I need to start at four and put two ones so I do one two three four and then next time I don't start as I don't start at zero again but I start there and add two ones that's why I use the k which is increased by count times and added to j I hope that is making sense maybe having a look at the actual code which is the decode here receives a string returns an int array 
this is exactly the same as this this is just a copy paste I've copied and pasted that there I have some Java doc comments here for some explanations and then if I run it against the original array it should return an array and that what I that's why that's what I print out here as you can see I have int r which is an array of integers equals decode s now the one that I generated here I need to decode it i.e. get the original value back and then loop through the elements of r this array of ints and then just print about print them out one next uh, to the other and then just print near a new line to have a better view I mean let me go back now to my terminal and compile the code and run it again as you can see here that is the encoded one and this is the original string or I'm sorry the original array which is exactly the same as this so four zeros to ones uh, one zero to ones three zeros and four and five ones as you can see here I hope this is making sense it's quite simple actually hope you enjoyed I hope this opens some doors for you to learn uh, encoding compression um, and encryption as well uh, if you want to go further and further thanks so much for watching thanks very much for watching and again remember the code will be on my web page the link is underneath this video thanks again and I'll see you next time